My next speaker is a rocket scientist. Really, she is. She works on airplanes, not rocket ships, but uh, nonetheless, she is. And um, I first met her uh, when we went out to Philadelphia as the Bernie delegation, and uh, she's really good stuff. Who wants to meet the lady that's going to take Rod Bloom's seat in District 1, U.S. Congress? And then give it up for Courtney Rowe. Come on, Courtney. All right. Thank you, Chris. How's everybody doing? Yeah, are we still fired up? All right. I'm used to going after a lot of speakers because uh, when I travel around, my last name's Rowe and everybody likes to do things alphabetically. So uh, you're right, right, right in the wheelhouse of when I'm ready to go here. Um, as Chris said, my name's uh, Courtney Rowe, and I'm running in District 1 for U.S. Congress. I live up in Cedar Rapids. Uh, I've lived most of my life in the Midwest. Uh, I'm originally from a little town called Dayton, Ohio. You, you might know it as the home of the Wright brothers. Anybody? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, so they were the first aerospace engineers, so it may be no surprise that I myself became an engineer. I'm uh, married, and I met my wife, how I'm pretty sure all lesbians meet their wives, but I haven't done a scientific poll. We met at church. <laughs> yeah. We were introduced by our pastor, and we fell in love over Bible study. True story. It's totally true. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, she just became the Reverend Raven Rowe, so I got to deal with that at home. So thank you for letting me come out here. And actually, um, my wife works as a chaplain right now at a local hospital. And she took this job because it's a passion of hers. She works in the chemical dependency and behavioral health units, which means she helps counsel people who are struggling with addiction and mental illness. And so she sees the problem that uh, is going on here in Iowa with our mental health care. She sees people coming into the hospital that really could be treated earlier, but we don't, we don't offer that for these people. We don't have the preventative treatment for them. And she sees addicts coming in, and they're getting better. And it's a lot better than them going to prison, which is way more expensive and doesn't help anybody. OK. So you may be asking, why is an aerospace engineer running for Congress? And it's a really good question. Well, what's driven me are two things my entire life. The first is the need to understand how things work, and the second is a calling to make them work better. And growing up in Dayton, Ohio, of course, I was surrounded by uh, rockets and airplanes. Uh, my senator was John Glenn, so this really seems like the right path. You know, you become an aerospace engineer and then you run, you know, for government, so this totally seems normal to me. But, you know, I didn't stop there. My interest expanded. And I started saying, how's our government work? How's the economy work? How's our military work? How does politics work? And that's why I have a minor in political science. I've studied economics. I served in the Air Force Reserves. Um, and as soon as I graduated and I got my first job, a few months later, I started volunteering on political campaigns. And I found out that that's how we can make a huge difference. So if you're wondering what you need to do tonight, is you need to volunteer. So if you find somebody you're passionate about tonight, please get out there and volunteer. The first campaign I worked on, I was living down in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a few years that I spent outside of the Midwest. And the campaign that was going on, this was in 2006, there was a proposition, 106 in Arizona, to take away domestic partner benefits from all couples. But it was attacking the LGBT community. And I just started my first job. I'd only been working a couple of months. But every day on the way to work, I had to drive by those damn signs, OK, that were promoting that we needed to protect our families by supporting Prop 106 to take away domestic partnership rights. 
And I said, what can I do to stop this? And so that's when I first started phone banking. And I'm proud to say that that's the first time in this country that we ever defeated a proposition like that at the ballot box. And it didn't happen by much. It was just, it was just barely, we barely beat it. But it was a lightning rod for the LGBT community because it was our first win at the ballot box. We'd won some Supreme Court cases, but we had never won at the ballot box. And we said, we can do this. The tide is changing. The time is now. And I realized that every phone call I made made a difference. And so if you think you're not going to make a difference, you will make a difference. Go out there, knock the doors, make the phone calls. That's so important. OK. So what am I about? That's probably what you're wondering. OK. Um, as I look at our country, to make our country the best that it can be, we have to make sure that every American has the opportunity to be their best. And that's what my whole platform is based on. You can't be your best if you're sick and you don't have access to health care. And that's why I support Medicare for all. As a cancer survivor myself, I got diagnosed with cancer at 26. I know how crippling medical debt can be. And I was fortunate that I had a health plan with a major company as an aerospace engineer. But even still, it was too expensive. So we need to reform our for-profit system to make it affordable for everybody. Because you know what? Everybody wants the exact same health insurance. And that health insurance is that if you get sick or you get injured, you can go to the doctor and afford your treatment to get better. We all want that plan, <laughs> right? It's really easy. And you know what? Trump voters want that plan. They want that plan. I've been traveling all around the district. I go all the way up north. I go to the county fairs. And I don't shy around away from talking to Republicans or talking to Trump voters. And I can tell you what, when I put my flyer out there that just says exactly what my positions are, they want Medicare for all. They may not support us on anything else, but they want Medicare for all. So we can win this. And you can't be your best self if you're struggling just to survive by working multiple jobs. My mom was a waitress, single mom when I was growing up. And she was working two jobs and at night going to school at a community college to become an accountant. But we couldn't make it on two jobs. And so she had to drop out and take on a third job bartending at night. Which means I slept on a couch at my great grandma's house pretty much every night as a kid growing up until about three in the morning, four in the morning when my mom would get off work. And we still struggled. We still struggled. She still with tears in her eyes, had to ask me if it was okay to put me on reduced lunch program. That's the reality that so many people in our country are facing, and it's not right. And the reason why they're ashamed is because we've all learned two things. First is that to be successful, it takes opportunity and hard work. Y'all heard that? Right? The lie is that in America, everybody has unlimited opportunity. So all you need to do is work hard, and you're going to be successful. So if you're not successful, that means you should be ashamed. And that's wrong. And you know what? The problem is not that people aren't working hard enough. It's that they're not having the opportunity that they need. And that's why I want to bring back, and I want to grow American opportunity. <laughs> And that's why I support a $15 minimum wage. And you know, our country is not going to be its best, most productive self. Our people aren't going to be their best, most productive self if they can't get access to the 21st century education and job training that they need. I work as an engineer, and I can tell you there are not enough people graduating in engineering. We cannot find people. We have job openings, recs, that sit for eight months. And they won't let us open more because we really need like 20 people. We're hiring in India like crazy, not 
just because they're cheaper, but honestly, because we can't find the engineers here. We need 21st century education and job training for our students. If you've done your job in high school, I support free tuition and trade school for all qualified students. And you can't be your best self if you're fighting discrimination. As I told you, that's what brought me in to politics to start with. We have to end discrimination. We have to take down any artificial barriers. I support equality for all people. And if we can't in this room today stand up and say Black Lives Matter, we need to ask ourselves why not. And finally, you can't be your best if you don't have clean water and an environment you can live in. And the next time somebody says, why do I care about the environment? Why do I care about saving Mother Earth? You tell them, you know what? The Earth will be here long after we're all gone. What we're trying to save is the environment for human survival. This is a war for our survival. That's what we're trying to save. And you can't do that when you're selling out to oil companies. Like, like some of my competitors in the primary. <laughs> I oppose the Dakota Access Pipeline. I sent supplies, I sent money with groups that went and protested. And I think we need to restructure our agriculture bill like we did originally what the agricultural bill was for, which was for sustainable agriculture, and so that we can promote farmers doing the right things to grow healthy food for us and to keep our water clean. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm an engineer, so I have a couple ideas of my own, but I don't want to take up more time because there's other speakers to get up here. But I've got a homeowner green energy plan that would expand green energy to, to everybody who's a homeowner, who save them about $100 per month, and it doesn't cost the government anything. You wanna find out about that, go check out my Facebook page. It's got a little bit on that, and I'm gonna have a website up next week. And I've also got a plan called the Main Street Market. We talked about wealth inequality. The reason why wealth inequality is so bad is that the people at the top own almost everything. My Main Street Market plan would make it easier for small businesses to start and to be able to sell stock immediately as a small business and raise capital. And that means you can invest your retirement income and the investments that you have in small businesses instead of in Wall Street. That's how we take back our country. That's how we expand ownership to everybody. That's what opportunity looks like. And I hope I can get your support on June 5th. I'm, I'm running in District 1, so Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, Dubuque, all over there. If you're in Iowa County, Power Sheet County, that's me too. Um, come right here, I got some buttons, and I'll talk to you about anything you wanna talk about. Thank you.